the future. Greetings, fellow travelers. This is Bouncer Bokel of Radio Retro Future, and today I want to try something new. Now, Bound for the Sticks is available on Amazon in our own web store at bouncer.gumroad.com. I want to talk briefly about the tales of the association and what I wanted to achieve with the various books that we've written so far. Maybe I'll even talk about individual short stories at some point. And I will start with The Wrench in the Machine, the first novel in the Association of Ishtar book series. For those new to Radio Retro Future, on this channel we discuss steampunk and other forms of retro futurism. So if you enjoy that type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe to please the algorithm. Also a quick announcement, our new comic Journey to Elysium is now available on Amazon and on associationofishtar.com. And with that, let's delve into the background of the Association of Ishtar. The tale of the series' creation starts with a character that I call Denkert Lexicon, the host of the Steampunk Beginner's Guide on this same channel. I created him long before I started work on the Association. When I worked on his costume, I attempted to find the line between Steam and Cyberpunk that was both a tribute to a Victorian sense of fashion and a DIY aesthetic of the Cyberpunk shows that I grew up with. But I never found a story for this character until I created the Association of Ishtar. The series started out as a collection of short stories, tales intended to inspire my viewers to create steampunk characters, worlds and stories that go beyond the Victorian era, cogs and top hats. I approached some of the publishers who loved the short stories but were afraid the atypical format would alienate the readers as they were written as dossiers instead of tales with a middle beginning and end. So I tried to connect some of these entries into a single adventure. And that adventure was... The wrench in the machine. My first goal was to write a book that introduced the readers to the concept of the series, that being a role that finds itself at the center in a knot in the multiverse. Although its cause is unknown, more and more rifts keep opening up on this version of Earth. Some are harmless gateways leading to other variations of Earth. Others make outsiders appear, a name given to all the creatures passing through the rifts. Outsiders can range from lost chickens and curious humans to Lovecraftian monsters, but more dangerous than any monster are ideas. Religions, ideologies, philosophies and technologies can tip the balance of power in favor of somebody who believes to have all the answers. My second motivation was to dial my interpretation of the steampunk genre to 11, that being cyberpunk in the past. What I hoped to achieve was to create an actual cyberpunk story set inside a past that never existed. Adding to that, for those who have not noticed, I have a thing for analog radio signals. Those nights that you were driving in the dark with nothing but a car radio for company. You'd hear these old tones and voices pouring over the speakers through a haze of static. As you stare at the tarmac, all of a sudden that meaningless white noise gets interrupted by a random voice. Then it's gone again, leaving you to wonder what that was about while you speed over the highway. Then I ask myself, what if that voice was intended for you? What if it was a warning of things to come? Those experiences gave rise to the villain of the story S-36, The Call Girl. The first story I wrote for the series and of whom the whole world building of the Association of Ishtar is built. And she has a thing for numbers that she transmits to the radio near her victims to announce her arrival. In a wrench in a machine, she is in league with a transhumanist cult, the Followers of the Signal, a group of people who believe they hear secret messages nobody else does. And they are right. With the guidance of their unseen benefactors, the Signalites seek to build a transmitter that can send all of humanity's consciousness to heaven. An idea that combines many of the ghost stories surrounding radio signals and transhumanist ideas of digitalizing human consciousness, but not all Signalites care about a project that will take generations to complete. Some just want to steer things up for their own amusement, while others want a shortcut to ascension. But this story isn't about them. 
This is about the people who let it get out of hand. Those who couldn't be bothered or tempted to dodge responsibility, pretending it was somebody else's problem. And none might be more guilty than the association itself. It would take a simple Dover police inspector to lift the lid of this conspiracy of silence. The Range in the Machine's protagonist, Inspector David Alborough, was mostly inspired by the British police dramas I watched with my parents in the 90s. These often took place in the more idyllic English communities. My idea was to take Alborough on a journey that would take him from a typical British police experience into an insane reality of cosmic horror and romantic futurism. Alborough is a flawed but grounded man with a strong sense of duty. When he found out something was wrong, he wanted to set things right. Instead, he came to the realization that he was the one out of place. His misadventures bring him in contact with the Association of Ishtar. Yes, they are not the main characters of this novel. Instead, I wanted to explore what the Association looks like from the outside perspective of the common man. The Association of Ishtar might perform heroic deeds, but they are not the heroes of the dime novels and epics, guided by generosity, kindness and reason. These are Avengers, fueled by passion like the goddess of love and war herself. Their goal is not to save lives, in line with prevailing morality, but to protect humanity and wreak vengeance upon all those who endanger it like the gods of old. Most importantly, associates do not follow orders. An associate must decide what is right and act on it. Would they make a wrong decision that endangers the planet? The association might declare them a lost number and risk getting hunted down like common criminals by forces as cunning and dangerous as themselves. They judge their suspects by this very philosophy. So would you import a potted plant from another world? The association might strike you down for contaminating the world's ecosystem. In the wrench of the machine we are introduced to various associates, each revealing why the association as a concept works and why it doesn't. The most prominent associate in this investigation is Associate 321. Born a slave, he became a veteran of the United States Navy in the British West Africa Squadron. During his younger years he has been looking for a place to belong, only to be disappointed every time. Thus he became a sailor, wandering all of the Atlantic Ocean and its harbors. Being a traveler, he became an admirer of popular culture. Music played over the wavecasters in particular, as it was the only fixture in his life. During his Navy career, he became a disillusioned with his causes. Not just because of the politics and colonial ambitions that became associated with the anti-slavery patrols. It was the people that he had saved themselves. Too often he would find slaves he liberated in the past serving as slave traders bound for Brazil less than a year later. And yet he didn't want to give up on humanity. He might have found his place in the association. He would fight no longer for the sake of nations, people or individual as flawed as himself. Instead, he would fight for humanity's survival. A war in which the distinction between friend and foe is black and white. Do people serve humanity, or do they seek to endanger it for their own gain? He has no plan for humanity's future. His goal is to ensure humanity has a future to begin with. This is where Inspector Alboro and Associate 321 clash the most. Alboro wishes to save as many people as he can, while 321 only cares about humanity's long-term survival in the face of a tidal wave of anomalies threatening to drown the world. One of those threats is the Signalites. Unfortunately, they have members in high places with a wide access to the media and even the association itself. This is why the association doesn't work. They have a philosophy that every associate is equal and hierarchies are ad hoc based on what the mission requires. However, its members, religions, ideologies and backgrounds differ greatly. This can be a problem if you have an associate who believes the rifts are being created by Jewish wizards. Among the associates are also signalites who weren't happy that their newfound religion was being scrutinized. On the public side of things, among the signalites were many public figures such as actors, nobility and even politicians. 
They have charities providing prostheses to amputees and support the sciences. In the media, they attack all their critics with ferocity, proclaiming there's a conspiracy to keep humanity bound to their mortal coil. Politicians and public servants alike, in fear of losing their careers and livelihoods, refrained from investigating the signalites, thus allowing them to fester like an open wound. It would take an inspector in his twilight years to provide the cure, but in this stage of the infection, he would have to cut deep and without anesthetics. This conspiracy had become a machine in which all the cocks had been arranged to turn the same way. This was a faulty machine. But the engineers agreed that its faults weren't a problem and everything was as it should be. They probably started to believe it too. Then this guy comes along with a wrench, announcing he will fix the machine. What should the engineers do? Let him? Or do they want him to go away? To find out the conclusion of this story, you can purchase the wrench in the machine today. As a matter of fact, this week we are running a discount campaign. You can use the code GETTHEWRENCH in our Gumroad store to receive 20% discount on any purchase for a limited time. Check the pinned comment for the details. This includes our latest books Bound for the Sticks and our comic Journey to Elysium. If you want to support our show and get early access to our upcoming books, consider becoming a member on Ream. It's a new crowdfunding platform, especially designed for independent publishers like myself. The platform also strives to give the readers a better experience overall than typical ebooks that you can get on places like Patreon. Members on the $10 level will get early access to the direct sequel to Bound for the Sticks, Anwin. And the early chapters of our upcoming military steampunk book, The Cosket Girls, will also be on there within a few months. I hope you enjoyed this little exploration of the series' themes. I plan to make more of them and focus more on the characters' place in the lore and the historical events and people who inspired them. We're also moving forward with the role-playing game and we're looking for people who want to help in its creation. I mean people who want to support us with drafting rules, playtesting and writing lore. For those who are interested in playing, tell us about the kind of adventures you want to play inside the Association of Ishtar Multiverse. Want to be involved? Meet other steampunks, history and fellow indie writer enthusiasts by joining our Discord. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna bid you adieu, and as always, make it your way.